I'm going to demonstrate some basic price analysis for Priceline. And I've selected Priceline because it tends to have uh, relatively big moves frequently. I should also say that I'm not suggesting anybody buy or sell Priceline or its derivatives based on any information in this video. I've downloaded a year's worth of data from Yahoo Finance. And uh, I've done some formatting and sorting here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is turn this uh, data set into a table. Basically, I'm going to turn it into a database. All right, this is going to allow me to filter and sort data quickly and also get aggregate values. All right, next I'm going to add a column. And uh, the column I'm going to add is for uh, the weekday. All right. You may want to look at specific strategies that involve just a day of the week. And to get the weekday, I'm going to use the text function. All right, which takes the date as an input and then asks you to convert it to something. Here I'm going to convert it to an abbreviation of the days. You can see that the, uh, the table feature quickly copies the formula down or automatically copies the formula down for us. Uh, I'm going to show you the formula I use there. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is look at uh, the difference between the, uh, the high and the low of the day. And I'm going to compare the uh, high and the low to the open rather than just taking the high minus the low. Uh, the reason is you may want to do something with these intermediate values. So I'm just going to label the column here. And then I'm going to get the open and subtract away the low. I'm going to do the same thing with the high minus the open. Now, if the difference between any of these values is significantly big enough, uh, you may be able to develop some sort of strategy based on trading off the open. All right, and this is probably a good time to go ahead and show you the totals or the aggregate feature uh, in, in this table. Okay, so I turned on the total row, and by default, it's just adding up all the changes here, but we can go ahead and look at aggregate values like the average. Okay, so we can see that on average, uh, Priceline tends to go up around $10 from the open at some point during the day. All right, and then um, I'll look at the average from the low, and we can see that uh, it tends to go down uh, about $11 uh, from the open at some point during the day. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is is calculate the the nominal change. Okay, and I'm going to calculate it as uh, close to close, and and this is how all financial instruments are quoted in the media. So when you hear the the S and P 500 rose by one percent or 17 points or something like that, uh, they're talking about the change relative to yesterday's close. So I'm just going to take the close today, subtract away the close uh, yesterday. All right, and there, there isn't a first one, so I'll just delete that value. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, calculate that as a percent. All right, and since this is a financial instrument, um, I'm going to calculate it based on the idea of uh, it continually compounding, so continually compounding interest. And to do that, I'm going to use the natural log function. Okay, and then it is just today's close divided by yesterday's close.
All right, I'll quickly convert that to a percent. All right, and let me put a couple of these formulas in here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and post this spreadsheet when I'm done with it as well. All right, and you can see the funny notation here uh, with the formulas. Instead of having cell references, it's using column names when it, when it can. All right, this is called a, a structured reference. But you can just as easily use uh, the, the cell addresses if you want. All right, this is just because I am uh, using the mouse to to point at cells. Okay. All right, the next thing we're going to do is calculate a daily volatility. Okay, and uh, the daily volatility is just the standard deviation of a number of days. So I could ca calculate it over the whole range of, of one year. All right, but uh, Option pricing is based on the idea of a monthly volatility, okay? And uh, there are, on average, 252 trading days in a year, all right? And so if I divide that by 12, I get 21, all right? So what I'm going to do is calculate a daily volatility based on the previous 21 days, all right? I'm going to calculate the volatility starting on the uh, the twenty third observation here. All right. The reason I'm doing that is uh, essentially what I'm saying is that the volatility uh, on this day, which happens to be uh, August fourteenth, twenty fourteen, is based on the previous twenty one days standard deviation. I'm going to quickly convert it to a percent. Okay, and from this, we can also calculate an annual volatility. Okay, and we do that by multiplying the daily value Right. by the square root of 252, the number of trading days. All right, I'll make that a percent. All right, and the annual volatility is something that you would see in option price quotes. Okay, so you can compare this, which is what would be termed historical volatility, uh, to the implied volatility that's used in option pricing. All right, and then you can get a relative uh, value, uh, whether or not the, the options are fairly valued based on historical volatility or if there's a very high implied volatility, that, that may imply that something uh, is coming up, like maybe earnings season, all right? and, and there may be uh, something you can do uh, trading around that. Okay? All right, so these values are used in option pricing, and, and option pricing is, is based on the idea that, well, a stock moves... Uh, are based on a, a normal distribution, okay? 
and uh, you know we can argue about whether they are or not but uh, this is how options are priced and and the idea behind a normal distribution says well the expected change on any given day uh, is actually zero all right but uh, we recognize that there's some volatility so we're not surprised if it moves up or down a certain amount and that certain amount is uh, a one standard deviation so in other words uh, on on August 14th here the first day that we calculated volatility well we wouldn't be surprised to see the stock move up or down 1.32 percent all right we may not even be surprised if it moves up a little bit more than that but generally we think it's going to be very close to to zero all right all things being equal so what I'm going to do is uh, calculate uh, the the actual change all right in in terms of of what did happen all right so as I said before all right we wouldn't be surprised to see the stock move up or down 1.32 percent so I'm going to convert this into an expected change all right and the expected change on August 14th here all right would be uh, 1.32 percent plus or minus okay times yesterday's close okay so it's we're not going to be hours. surprised if we see uh, the stock move up or down about seventeen dollars okay all right and then I'm going to convert that into well how many standard deviations it actually did move okay and I'm going to go, going to call that magnitude okay so I'm going to take the change that we calculated a while ago and divide it by the expected change and this is going to give me the number of standard deviations that price line moved on this day okay All right, what I'm going to do now is just sort of take a quick count and, and a quick look at uh, how it moves uh, relative to that normal distribution that I mentioned a while ago. All right, so the idea behind the normal distribution says that um, on any given uh, uh, stock, all right, about 68% of the time, we expect the moves to be within one standard deviation of the mean, which we expect to be zero. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and look at price line based on that idea. All right, so if it's significantly more, then we could say it's a it's a quieter stock. Uh, if it's somewhat less, we can say well, it's a more volatile stock than uh, what would be expected from a normal distribution. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is filter out the data a little bit here. All right, and uh, I'm going to look for values between uh, negative one standard deviation and one standard deviation. And right, I'm going to look at the count of that. Okay, whoops, I went a little too far there. All right, so there was 164 days where it was within one standard deviation of the mean. And uh, usable data in our in our set is is 230 days because we had to uh, leave out some of the the leading data, All right? So if I divide 164 by 230, uh, we see that 71% uh, of the days fell within one standard deviation, and so we might conclude, uh, despite what I said at the beginning of the video, that price line tends to be a little bit quieter uh, than we would expect if it follows. Uh, a normal uh, distribution. Right, I'm going to put in a couple of uh, formulas here and uh, then I'm going to uh, continue this uh, in, a, in a second video. There's been a lot presented here.